Hey, in this video we are going to make a deep dive into Handlebars GS, which is one of the most popular templating engines. I run the npm init command to create the package.json file that will hold our app's information. Now I need to install Express.js using the npm install express command. That done, let's create a very basic express app. So first off, I need to require the express module, then create an instance from express and a constant that contains the port's number. Let's run a test. It's working. Now if I want to change something on my app, I won't see the change unless I stop running the app using Ctrl plus C, then run it again. This process takes a lot of our development time and that's why we should make it automated by installing a very useful module which is Nodemon. Now running the app using the Nodemon app instead of Node app will keep restarting the server automatically whenever I save the changes I did on the code. Until now, we are displaying a plain text when a user opens the main page of our app. So, to send an HTML file on request instead, we need to create a public folder which should contain our static files, such as the index.html file. We should point to that folder in the app.js file using the app.use method and pass the static.express built-in middleware function as parameter and give it the name of the folder. Now in the rest.send method we should just use the name of the file that we need to serve. So by now we can send static HTML files to the user, however we can't make changes to the content of these HTML files dynamically before sending them. Let's say I get some data from an API and I want to inject it to the HTML before sending it. With the code I have now, it's impossible and this is where handlebars comes in handy. First things first, let's start by installing the module. Now we need to create a directory which will hold the necessary handlebars files. So we need to create a views folder which will contain a file named main.handlebars and a folder called layouts 
and create a file called index.handlebars inside of it. That done. Now we should import the Express Handlebars module. Then set the view engine as handlebars. And then use the app.engine method and pass the extension name and the handlebars constant as parameters. Handlebars has a set of properties. The first and the most crucial one is the layout steer, which points to the folder that contains the necessary files. Now we should use the render method, which has two parameters main which points to the main.handlebars file and an object with the layout property pointing to the index.handlebars file let's fill the index.handlebars with the typical html skeleton and type body inside of a triple of curly braces and type a couple of simple HTML tags inside the main.handlebars file. Let's see what exactly is happening here. We have the index.handlebars file which has a placeholder that we created using the triple braces notation. And then we have the main.handlebars that contains the body of the page which should go inside that placeholder. And then all of that code is transformed into regular HTML using the render method which will create an index.html and send it to the user. Let's create some elements inside the page. You might be wondering where to put CSS files. Well, we should put them where we have been usually putting them. It's inside the public folder. Now, as you might have noticed, the extension name of the handlebars files are pretty long. So, to reduce them, we need to use the optional property xname, referring to the file's extension name.
If I run a test, the server doesn't recognize the files since they still have handlebars as extension as opposed to what it should be, which is HBS. We can use the default layout property so we don't have to refer to the layout in the render method. However, if we set a default layout and then set another file in the render method, the referred one will override the file that has been set in the default layout property. The main file can be split into smaller chunks of code inside different files so-called partials, so it reduces its complexity when it starts to look complex with hundreds of lines of code. To do that, we need to create another subfolder and let's call it partials, which will hold the different small components of the page. Now, to point where they should be included, we should use the double curly braces notation with a greater than sign, followed by the name of the file. Now, to refer to that folder, we need to use the partials dear property. As you can see up until now, we are still using static handlebars components that get merged and transformed into HTML files, then get sent to the user. So, to dynamically inject a value that we get from a certain database or API inside the file to send, we simply set it inside the object in the render method. And now, inside the handlebars file, we just need to use the same name of the property inside a couple of curly braces.
An example of block helper is iterators. Let's say I want to inject a list of data inside the file instead of a single variable. To do that, we need to iterate over that list and render each value of the list one by one. To use an iterator, we need to start the helper block with the hash symbol in each keyword followed by the name of the list, and then to refer to every single item we need to use this keyword which refers to the list and the name of the property, then we close the helper block. Another example of helper blocks is conditionals. Let's say we want to show the list only if a certain condition is met. It's almost as simple as we do in JavaScript, except that we use the double curly braces in the hash symbol to start the block, then close it with another couple of curly braces and the slash before the F keyword. You can learn more about Handlebars and its helpers in the documentation on their website. You can find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification and see you in the next video.